Hey guys, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel and welcome back. Now today, based off of popular demand, uh, I want to talk about um, DAL E2, the image creation AI, where you can basically take any written words, any description of any random thing, and through purely through the use of AI, it will create that image and it'll come up with multiple different versions of of an image based off of the criteria that that you give it and in most cases from a purely visual perspective um they're very believable they're they're they seem the, very often the shading and the subject material and the way these different images are integrated together not bad i gotta say not bad at all from a convincing standpoint and I'm putting emphasis on the word convincing standpoint because, well, I'm an art channel <laughs> and I have my opinions on these things with regards to, to well, art and expression and, and individuality and all these different things. I have a lot to voice in on this. Now, as an individual, I, I had a couple of people reach out to me in the comments, emails and stuff like that, asking me what my opinion was because this is predominantly an art channel and I talk about art all the time. Um, but on a personal level, I haven't felt particularly compelled or inspired to check this out more. I'm not sitting there going, oh my God, this is revolutionary. This is such a big deal. Oh my God, this is so cool. Look what it can do. I'll be completely honest with you. I mean, at my age, I've seen so much imagery by so many millions of different sources in so many millions of different ways. I've been here to witness the, the birth and surge of 3D animation and how that revolutionized things. And I've seen that. I've seen how certain trends have come and gone a million times. I've looked at marketing and advertising and pop art and contemporary art and fine art and surrealism art. And there's just so much of it out there that this is just another image making machine in that regard. And that's kind of why I've, I've very often looked at these demos of, of DALI and or DALI 2 or whatever and go, eh, cool, whatever. It's kind of my, the way I feel about it. I think that what most artists are more concerned about is not only the fact that it can create image is create images and that it can very convincingly put together visual imagery based off of written criteria. And I've personally watched the videos that I've seen, the other reviews I've seen from, from other individuals. One was from Marcus Brownlee, MKBHD, uh, who gave a good demo of it and stuff like that, who's not an artist. Uh, and Anthony Jones, uh, who is an artist, and he voiced in his opinion. So I definitely go and check out his video as well. I'll link it in the description below. And if I forget, just go to Robot Pencil and uh, the YouTube channel, and you can check out his video on it there. And a lot of other artists have also voiced in their opinions on it. So, what is my first impression of it? How do I feel about it from the perspective of a professional artist? Somebody who's been doing this his whole life. It's neat. That's about as emotional as I can be about that. And the reason being is one of the things that I've learned over the years, especially when you when the novelty of imagery wears out. I've been doing this for professionally for over 20 years and I've been a human on this planet and I've been looking at images for for four and a half decades. It's cool. It's believable to a certain extent. You know, hey, look, you can take an astronaut riding a horse. Neat. Right. And I can give it even more specific criteria. Neat. But that's just image creation to me. And I'm saying that I'm putting emphasis on that because it's, I don't consider that art. And I think that to anybody who confuses, who, who can't make that distinction, uh, might really, really appreciate a tool like that. Might really appreciate, uh, you know, oh, wow, look, I can get some cool looking convincing imagery. If I can buy the rights to this, then I don't have to hire an artist to do blah, blah, blah type of work. And in many respects, maybe. Particularly when it comes to photography and stuff like that, more photograph-based stuff. Um, I've seen a couple of examples of the illustrated versions of things. It's very, very basic in that regard. But yeah, 
okay, you can hire somebody, you, you, can, you can skip yourself out on hiring somebody and just tap in some criteria and pick your favorite I- image and use that. But I think that the, the, the problem with that is that when it comes to true artistic expression, be it in the animated form, be it in the illustrated fantasy art form, be it in the photography form, be it in the fine art form, be it in the surrealist form. It, art in and of itself is so much more than just putting together an image. Putting together the perfect convincing image is not what makes something memorable or meaningful to somebody else. No, art is a, to me, and very much in most part to me, a form of communication from one person to another. And that form of communication is very personal to the individual who you're communicating to. You can have one person look at the art by a certain artist and feel completely touched and moved and enraptured and obsessed with that person, that art, artist's form of expression. Go on Instagram and start to pay attention to the animators or the illustrators or the photographers that just that you just obsess over that you go, my God, I wish I could do something like that. Notice that you're not just reacting to the image. The image is only a small percentage of what you're really, really reacting to and loving. You're reacting to the expression that that person's expressing, the, the psychology, the philosophy behind that person's expression, the colors that that person chooses puts you into this mood. It takes, transports you into this into this world, this emotional world that you want to live in, that you want to be a part of, that you want to surround yourself with, exactly the same way you would having a personal relationship with somebody. And that's what artistic expression is. The art that I create, the art you're listening to right now, is not the perfect communication with any audience out there. I'm not trying to appeal to everybody. I'm trying to appeal to like-minded individuals, people who get why I do what I do, who understand something about the textures, something about the subject, something about the colors, something about the specularity, something about the forms, something about the, the composition is reminiscent. It's connecting you to something. It's reminding you of something. You know what it's reminding you of? All of the experiences that I've I've experienced through my entire life that make me who I am, that you can listen to me talking right now and you can look at the imagery that I'm creating and you can feel this emotional connection between the two. There's something in my art through the forms that I'm using, through the textures, through the subjects that makes sense when you connect it to the artist that's making it. You listen to the stories of my past, of my family, of my health, of, of everything, of anything that makes me who I am as a vlogger, as a YouTuber, whatever you want to call it. And then you look at the artwork and you say, yeah, I can see that connection. And even though objectively the imagery might not directly tie into my, my, the superficial aspects of my personality, somewhere deep down inside you can go, yeah, I can see where his European Polish family, Polish grandmother influence has translated into his visual tastes. I can see and imagine somebody who is raised in a European mentality, psychology. And you can see that translate in my brain. I can see that Adam is a huge Souls fan. I can see that Adam listens to Vati Vidya while he's painting. I can feel that in the art. And that is something that AI can't replicate. It can't replicate my life experience, nor can it tie together the threads of my past in such a specific, intricate way as to capture a personality that an other human being can empathize with and connect with on a much deeper level than just the imagery that I create. 
I look at Anthony Jones's work. I look at Tyler Edlin's work. I look at Cynics's work. I look at Clint Kearley's work. I look at Ethan Becker's work. I look at all of these different artists. I look at Bikshinsky's work. I look at Frazetta's work. I don't just look at a guy who does cool imagery. No, when I look at Frazetta's work, I don't just see a guy who draws really cool characters and draw, draws overly, overly emphasized, sexualized figures and stuff like that. Yeah, on the surface, he does, he's got sexy comic book characters and over, over masculine and over feminine. And he's got the classic, you know, hero villain type of scenario. But there's more to that. I, when I look at Frazetta's work, I see, I see a man who really celebrates the contrast between masculine and feminine. I can sense the relationship. I, I, looking at, at Frazetta's documentaries where his, son, where his sons and his friends are talking about the relationship he had with his wife. His wife was, was his muse. He adored her. He studied her. And he, he loved, he was real. He celebrated life. And he, wasn't, he didn't shy away from expressing himself fully. There was a bravery. There was a courage. There was a... There was a uh, 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 a fearlessness in the way he expressed the human form that didn't objectify and insult it, it celebrated it. And I sense that in his artwork. There's a person there, you know, a, bo- a guy who, who grew up as a little kid who was, who, who nerded out over space stories and cowboys and Indians. Not just a guy who algorithmically creates space imagery. No, I can sense the young boy, the little geek as a little kid who nerded out over this kind of stuff and captured it in imagery. There was a, his, there was his life philosophy that tied into his work. And then all of that tied into all of these little nuances, these strengths and weaknesses of him as an artist that culminated to create these images. Are they perfect? No. Frazetta's work is never going to be perfect. No human artist's work is ever going to be perfect. It's just the best manifestation of his thoughts, his feelings, his fantasies conveyed in the artistic form using the medium and using these techniques that he slowly but surely fleshed out based off of these many, many influences that he and every fan of his art are, are mutual fans of. Think about that for a sec. I've just described an entire life story or at least a little snippet of a human being's very, very rich and complex life story. And I can feel that. I can feel it in his art as a fellow human being. I can empathize with that as a fellow human being. And it's that aspects of his art. It's those aspects of his expression as an artist that make me love his work. But I can go into Dali 2 and type in uh, 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 nude comic book style male riding horse holding battle axe with beaded necklace flowing in wind. And I'm going to get 600 different interpretations of that based off of whatever algorithmic image Dal E took off the internet and compiled together to create this original image. But none of it possesses a cohesive personality. It's just images. It's just slapping together random images. And no matter how hard Dali tries, Dali is not a sentient being. <laughs> Dali is just an algorithm. It's just it's just slapping together data and making an image out of it. And I can't connect on a human level to that. The other thing that I alluded to in a minute is probably one of the most important aspects of humanity and expression and something that can and should resonate into your work the more a master you become of your trade. And that is imperfection, flaw. I mean, I teach art. This is my my full-time job. I teach online. And one of the aspects of imagery that I, um, that I really reinforce and I talk, I I teach quite a bit in different, depending on the subject that, that I'm teaching at the time, is imperfection, it's flaw, it's unpredictability, it's chaos. And that's something that requires an incredible level of insight and sensitivity to do. That chaos, that flaw, that imperfection is something that resonates into every single artistic form. It's subtle, 
but it taps into the wavelength of humanity. And that is something that every artist, from music to dance to painting to cooking to comedy to photography, are very, very tapped into, particularly when you're masterful at what you do. It's not our perfections that make us humans. It's our imperfections. And those imperfections are tied into our personality. My insecurities as a person, my insecurities as an artist, my insecurities as a lover, my insecurities as a parent, my insecurities as a guy who, who, who doesn't have a perfect lawn outside of his house or whose car is on its last limbs and God only knows how rusty the, the underbelly of my car looks. All of those little things culminate together to create me in my unique form, in my vulnerable form. And if you listen to my art talks, if you've listened to more than one of my art talks every week, you'll see that I don't, it's not my, I'm not sitting here talking about what a winner I am. I'm not sitting here talking about how perfect I am. I'm telling you a very, very specific story of an artist who's been through these very, very specific ups and downs, successes and failures that many of them might resonate with you and you might go, yeah, I've been through that too. Thank you for describing it in that way because now I don't feel so alone. And other things you might not relate to because it might be a very different type of artist than you, in which case you might go and check out Trent's channel or you might go and check out Ahmed's channel because they might have been through their own little thing and each one of us kind of culminate together to create this community of all artists that all balance each other. I have in only moments sewn together an incredibly intricate web of humanity. And all of that culminates into my artwork. Am I worried that there's some algorithm that's going to hijack my soul and be able to replicate my art better than I can? Not even remotely. Not even remotely. So am I worried about Dali? No, I'm not worried about it whatsoever. Do I think it's neat? Yeah, I think it's neat. Do I see it replacing artistic jobs? <laughs> Not even remotely close. I, not for another thousand years, in my humble opinion. And besides, the very knowledge that it's being created by a computer and not being created by a human who I can have an emotional connection with, that I can have an emotional relationship with through their art, uh, in and of itself is is a kill switch for me. It's it, it just disconnects me from the art. The other thing, too, that I think that's really important to highlight um, from an artistic perspective and from a human perspective is that the whole purpose of art in the first place is to, to the best of the artist's ability, using whatever medium they, they use to express themselves as an authentic communication tool between two people. It's a human to human experience. That individuality is to me sacrosanct. It's what makes art what it is. I don't, f I don't just follow artists because I like what they paint. I follow artists because I like who they are. And if my, if my emotional relationship or my emotional feelings towards an artist dwindle, so does my care for their art. I connect, I personally connect the personality of that person to their art. And if I don't like the person, I don't like their art either because that resonates into the authenticity of my experience when I look at their artwork. And what Dal E is doing is exactly the same thing that reality TV, in my humble opinion, has done to the human experience on television as well. I despise reality TV for a very important reason. <laughs> reality TV is taking properties of real life, aka vulnerability, um, um, desire, um, anger, jealousy, frustration, happiness, euphoria, lust, etc. It's taking all of these properties and it's churning them through a machine and it's creating this synthetic version of the real thing. And it's calling itself reality TV. 
And that's very, very misleading because reality TV to me is the absolute polar opposite of reality. What reality TV is doing is it's taking an emotion that we normally try to hide from society, like our vulnerability, our sadness, our runny nose, our running mascara, our gassiness, our fartiness, our burpiness, our, our jealousy, any of these kind of raw negative emotions that humans feel. And it takes a camera, it sticks them in a room with bright lighting and every single time that person finds themselves in a vulnerable situation and it's, and it's being conveyed in some very superficial way through that person's face, the camera guy goes, quick, go, sh do a close up on that girl's eyes, her mascara is running, go, 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 get the snot, you see the little snot, the little, look under her nose, okay, go, zoom in on that, oh, there's vulnerability, there's humanity, there's vulnerability. And everybody else kind of sucks this up as going like, oh yeah, look, she's really upset. Oh God, what an embarrassing situation. Oh boy. It's creating this fast food empathy type of experience. It is marketing and mass producing the human experience. But it's not human because I can't even I can't even walk past reality TV and see it in my peripheral vision without getting triggered by it, without being insulted by it, without being hurt. It actually turns me off of empathy. It turns me off of the human experience. And Dali kind of finds into that falls into that same category as well. Let's take all of the superficial properties of artistic expression and we can algorithmically package it up into some text imagery vomiting machine and call it art? No. Well, they haven't gone as far as to call it art yet. It's just kind of like this brand new, hey, check out this new thing type of phase. But that's just the most superficial aspects of that expression. Just like that girl's runny mascara is the most superficial expression of that girl's jealousy or sadness or heartbreak. It's fake. It's just the, sim it's the symbolism of humanity. It's not the real thing. And as George Carlin says, leave the symbolism to the symbol minded, <laughs> right? To me, when it comes to expressing something to, when it comes to the relationships I have with my kids, when it comes to the relationships I have with my family, when it comes to the relationships that I have with my art, when it comes to the relationship I have with, with myself, I don't take that for granted. And I don't share it for granted. And when I'm sharing my thoughts and feelings with you, I, I, am, I am expressing something vulnerable, something real, something candid, something that hopefully will bring your life some kind of value through the shared common experience. I am respecting you as a rich, deep human being. I'm not just throwing emotional crap at you in order to try to get you hooked into my videos, right? Don't confuse that. That is the essence of, that is what Dali is. Dali is just algorithmic. Dali is cold. Dali is not sentient. It's just slapping together algorithmic images. And all of those people who've reached out to me or anybody out there online who said they're going, oh shit, my job is doomed. It's not doomed. It's not doomed any more than you as a human being are doomed. You're not an algorithm. You're a deep, rich human being that goes beyond the algorithm. It goes beyond the word. It goes beyond the expression. It's a deep felt thing that is a culmination of an entire lifetime of experience that has created this energy, this wavelength, this pheromone, this chemical, this expression that is you. And on a very, very spiritual, on a very personal level, that is the thing that I'm connecting to with you. It's not the image that you created. Okay. With that said, thank you very much for joining me. And of course, I love you with all my heart and happy painting. Take care.